All right, I'm going to get right into it. I'm not going to wait that long for people to to hop on. Plus, you know, with the shadow banning and whatever the case may be. Okay, so cuties, uh, or the French word is mignones, because this is a pretty much a French film. And uh, the director is uh, Maimouna Decor, a Senegalese woman. Apparently, this was kind of based off some of her... Uh, upcomings, upbringings, her some of her things she went through. Okay, so we have Amy, the uh, the main character, and then we have her brother Ismael, and then we have the mother Marion. Okay, they're French Muslims. Okay, well they're Senegalese, f- French, and they're Muslim. And then we have the f- the four girls. We have Angelica, the Mexican. I'm deeming she's Mexican because she looks Mexican. She's the, the ringleader. Um, I didn't catch the name of the little white girl. Now, there's c- certain tropes with the girls attached to this movie. So we have Angelica, the Mexican. We had the little white girl. I guess she'd be like the trailer trash version. Then we have another little black girl. Uh, who's probably more hypersexual than all of them, but I'll explain why. And then we have a little fat girl named Yasmin. Okay, now this, th- th- these four girls are the original dance group. Amy meets them later on. So let's get into t- this to this shit show. So then, uh, it's, it's in the beginning. Amy goes to a with her mother to a Muslim prayer service for women. Uh, the speaker says uh, there will be more women in hell than men, for we are precious in the eyes of Allah. And it's, and she asks, where does the dwell, where does evil dwell, in the bodies of uncovered women? They live in a housing project. Okay. Am I am I too red? Am I? I'm a little bit too red. Sorry, I'm just adjusting these lights. So I'm looking a little too red. There we go. Um, live in the housing projects. Amy lives in the same building as uh, uh, Angelica and the little Mexican girl. Angelica lives in the same building as Amy. So Amy, after the prayer service, is walking down. She passed the laundry room. She sees Angelica. Angelica is, is, is dressed in some faux leather stretch pants and a crop top. And she's dancing extremely seductively like you would uh, imagine a mexican woman or a spanish woman dancing to um you know spanish music how they tend to dance very seductively i am too fucking red right now i don't like this light that's why i have to go with this no too red too red okay i think that's yeah am i okay no yeah okay she dances seductively while doing laundry, and then she begins to iron her hair on an ironing board. Amy sees all this. And, okay, so then in, in Amy's home, uh, her father is preparing to take on another wife, a second wife. So there's a certain bedroom that Amy's not allowed in. That room is solely for the new wife coming in of the new wife. Okay, no one's allowed in this in this room. In fact, the mother actually takes the door handle when she closes the door, takes the door handle so no one can enter this room. This is solely for the new wife. Okay. Amy then tries dancing seductively. She then tries to iron her hair <laughs> and she burns some of her hair off. Okay. And then at the, the next day at her new school, Amy sees the four girls at her new school dressed very, very provocatively. Amy begins practicing dancing and she begins to tie her shirt in a knot. You remember back in the day how the girls would tie their shirts in a knot to expose the midriff, the stomach? And Amy's father takes on a second wife. Mary and the mother is told to be a good wife by her auntie because her mom does not like the idea of, of being 
of him of her the husband taking a second wife. I mean, these fucking lights are like really pissing me off right now. Fuck, we'll leave it like, like that. All right, and then um, Amy. Okay, one point Amy finds out that her father is taking a second wife. She's in her mother's room dancing. She then hides underneath the bed, and this is when Amy and the auntie discuss uh, the, the the coming of the second wife. Uh, the mother begins to cry and slap herself. Of course, Amy's crying underneath the bed hearing all this. Uh, and then now as she progresses, Amy begins to hide her affinity for T-shirts, for crop tops underneath big shirts. So what she'll do is she'll wear her, her seductive stuff and then put the big clothes overneath. And then when she gets to school, she'll take it off. Okay. She then steals her cousin's cell phone while they are moving in the new wife's furniture. The next day at school, she meets the four girls. They make fun of her. Angelica, the Mexican girl, lives in Amy's building. Amy uses the stolen phone to follow Angelica on social media. Amy begins posting selfies of herself on social media. The next day, the girls are discussing a guy... Okay, here's this is here's where the fuck shit comes in. So <laughs> she's listening to the girls discuss stuff. So here's this here's the, the discussion. This is this is in actual movie. The girls are discussing a guy pissing in a girl's mouth. They think that's how babies are made. They say if it goes through your body, it's rape. Uh, the guy puts it in your mouth. And it comes out your stomach. They discuss the length of a man's penis. Jessica, little white trailer trash girl, I assume, because it's off camera. You hear them talking, but you don't see who's actually saying what. I'm assuming this is Jessica. Jessica says, I've seen my brothers and it's not that long. Yasmin, the little fat girl, says, maybe your brothers hasn't finished growing. All the while they're looking at porn. On a cell phone. Okay. So then the girls. Prompt. They promote Amy. To go sneak into the boys bathroom. To take pictures of a little boy's penis. That they like. <laughs> so she goes into the bathroom. And tries to attempt to record him. Using the bathroom. And he, he sees her. And he curse, curses at her. Because he's older. So they're chasing older boys at this point. Okay. Uh, Angelica plays dancing girl groups on her phone called the Sweetie Swags. So like a dance, the dancing thing is the real big thing in their in their city. Okay, the dance competition, like uh, you got served. Okay, basically, is it like a you got served, a French porn version of you got served with underage kids? All right. Amy is, is, okay, so then at the next practice, Amy is in charge of filming the girls uh, practicing. Uh, they make fun of Amy's flat butt. Amy is watching stripper videos underneath her hijab during prayer. So she's in prayer with the older ladies, and she's underneath, and underneath her hijab, she's, she's watching stripper videos with the earphones in. This now, mind you, this movie is brought to you by a Senegalese woman. Okay. She then, after the prayer meeting, she then begins to notice all the older women, their their butts and hips. These women are very shapely. Okay, you know how African women can be built rather statuesque. So she starts looking at these women's butts and hips. Okay. The girls uh, meet older boys and then lie about the age, their ages. The little black girl, not Amy, but the little black girl. The little black girl is trying to convince the boys she's not 11, but she's older. The black girl finds a condom. They're out in the woods. Like, okay. The black girl finds a condom. She makes, she blows a balloon out of it. She didn't know it was a condom. And the girls are like, 
you know that's a condom. She's like, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. So then they rinse her mouth out with soap and dishwater because they think she's infected. It's the black girl. The girls then video chat the one boy they try to record in the bathroom. He calls them little girls and then he hangs up on them. Next day, um, Angela beats up Yasmin, little fat girl, and kicks her out of the group. Amy then takes her place in the group. Angelica um, rec then records Amy humping the floor in a dance move. Amy and then Angelica begin to bond. Angelica's parents run a restaurant. She hardly sees them. She thinks she's become a bad daughter. So her grades in school have slipped. She's latched onto this dancing thing because basically no one spends time with her. Okay, so that's her problem. Doesn't go into the other girl's backstories. Amy has to learn how to cook for her father's wedding to his second wife. It is a rite of passage into becoming a woman. Okay. And then as she goes into the, uh, into, uh, she opens the closet. And there's her wedding dress that she's supposed to wear for the wedding. It begins to leak blood, which is symbolism for her becoming a woman. So the leaking of the blood is the prelude to her having a menstrual. We're going to get into that. Amy then ditches her duties for the for the wedding and then goes to the dance auditions, but is late. Her team is already auditioning. Okay. Then Amy runs back home and then she begins her menstrual. So the dress is the foretelling of Amy's future to become. Okay. So through the dress, uh, we see what, what is to become of Amy. Okay. As she goes through her journey, the girls then sneak into play laser tag. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The next day, the girls confront Amy. Amy pleads her case to Angelica. Angelica believes her. So she's back into the group. The next, uh, the next scene, the girls sneak into play laser tag. They get caught by the guard. The girls then accuse the man of harassing and groping them. Another a second a second security guard comes in. And then they get the alert that they made the dance finals. And then before they leave, Amy begins to dance for the two security guards. They then record a music video on the stairs. Now, this is the first probably the most the, the first of the most disgusting parts of this movie so the dance routine on the stairs the, the for the little music video utterly disgusting disgusting and these are 11 year old girls okay amy then comes to school the next day uh all dolled up okay she's dressed very very seductively whatever she gets into a fight with one of the rival dance group girls. During the fight, her pants are pulled down, exposing her underwear. And then all the other kids pull out their phones and start recording it. Amy's uh, dress begins to take on a shape of its own. So she goes back home after the fight. You can see the dress. She opens the, the closet door and the dress begins to fill out. You understand? It starts to take on a shape of a woman. So the breasts fill out. The hips widen, the dress fills out. So it's like someone's in, it's wearing the dress and it's filling out. Okay. Very symbolic. Very symbolic. Then they go shopping. And this is the shot of the trailer where you see them coming down the brick, uh, the brick way. And they're wearing the underwear inside out of their clothes. So they went on a shopping spree. They did that part. Ismael then tells the mother, Amy, has been buying toys and trinkets. So basically, Amy's she's a she's a little klepto. She steals things. Okay. Um, the mother briefly passes out during dinner. Amy exhibits a mild concern. The mother is the symbol of Amy's oppression. The mother, coupled with the auntie and the Muslim uh, doctrine, is the symbol of oppression for amy okay angelica then tells amy uh they're the laughing stock at school because of her little girl underwear that was exposed during a fight the cousin whose phone she stole weeks prior 
comes back for and and sees that he takes back her phone, his phone. He said, "That's my phone." So then Amy then begins to unzip her jacket. She begins to unbuckle her pants. He then pushes her against the door, takes back his phone. She then fights him and bites him. She takes the phone back, runs into the bathroom. He's banging on the door, giving back my phone. She then takes a picture of her crotch and her panties and then posts it on the social media. The next day in school, she's wearing a, a, a dress and a top. A little boy slaps her on the butt and calls her a slut for posting the crotch shot on the social media. She then becomes upset and stabs the boy in the hand with the pencil. When she gets home, Amy's mother then slaps her and beats her. Uh, the auntie <laughs> and the mother then put Amy through a purification ritual they're dousing her with holy water and then amy and then they have her arms outstretched out like the cross so then amy begins to convulse and she begins twerking as if she's purging out the dance moves the next day the girl said amy crossed the line that they're not strippers so i guess the crotch shot posting was too much even for them okay a wall-off priest is then brought in to pray over amy the priest tells amy's mother she has a right to leave the marriage if it's become too heavy of a burden he also tells her there is no evil spirit inside amy okay amy no longer dresses provocatively she's wearing these long t-shirts now Amy is then kicked out of the group and is replaced by the fat girl, Yasmin, the one that Angelica beat up prior. The day of the father's wedding is the same day as the dance competition. She sees the new wife covered in white. So, you know, in certain sects of, Muslim, uh, of the Muslim religion, the wife is, is covered in all white from head to toe. She goes through the purification ceremony. Only the, the husband on, and, you know, the day of the, the night of the marriage can lift her, uh, you know, she can only she can reveal herself to her husband after they've been, you know, the ceremony, whatever the case may be. So she sees the, the wife and she's covered in all white. She freaks out. She runs outside. So then <laughs> Amy then leaves for the competition. She puts on her outfit. She then sees Yasmin walking down um, on next side next to the canal. She pushes Yasmin into the river, into the into the canal. Canal Yasmin is struggling to swim. She swims to a buoy. <laughs> so then Amy goes to the competition. She shows up. They're like, what are you doing here? Where's Yasmin? Yasmin's a no-show. They're huddled backstage because they're up next to perform. And then they go on stage to perform. Now, this is hands down the most second second most disgusting part. This 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 routine is way more disgusting than the, the routine on the video on the on the stairs. I can't even put into words. Like, e yeah, some of these moves you you would only see in a strip club. Like, seriously, like half this routine you would see in a strip club. That's how bad it was. And then you had the one girls backside to backside, rubbing their butts against each other. It was, it's bad. It is so bad. And, you know, people are going to say, well, y'all shouldn't give it attention. And, and, and then people are going to say, well, what about these other TV shows, um, like the cheerleading TV show, whatever the case may be. I get all that. But at some point, at some point, somebody has to sound the alarm. I get it. Should have happened with uh, the, 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 the tiaras and toddlers. Right. It should have happened with the black TV show cheerleading show. I remember that shit. It should have already happened. But now it's time to ring the alarm. OK. And then on top of that, 
you know, people keep talking about, well, yeah, you know, these human traffickers and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? A lot of these people, a lot of these kids, the days of the dirty old man van club, all my old heads know what I'm talking about. The dirty old man van club, the old man has the van and he pulls up with a, a sucker and a lollipop. Hey, little girl, you want some candy? Those days are long gone. Okay. A lot of your trafficking, and I mean a lot of it, comes from family members. There's a lot of these mothers that are offering their kids to these traffickers. Now, I'm, I can go on a limb and say this movie was one huge ad for trafficking. You know why? They had over 700 girls audition for this role. Who gave the final say for these children to, to, to audition for these roles? It was the mothers. Now, I'm sure there were some fathers that said, hell no. And maybe the mother said, well, the hell with you. My baby's, my baby's going to be a star. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. I'm sure that happens. But everybody agrees. The first teacher, the first nutritionist, the first line of defense is the woman. At the end of the day, I find it funny that women want the right to do what they want with their bodies, whether they're housing a living being or not. But you don't want the responsibility uh, when it's time to protect and do what's right by these children. You know what I'm saying? This is a huge ad for, for the pedal stuff, without question. And then once again, you have a sister, African whatever, at the forefront giving the, this out. Okay? I don't want to hear no more shit about white people. Nope. I don't want to hear no more shit about white what white people do. I don't want to hear shit about the evil white man, evil. No, it is our own doing this to our own period point blank. So please miss me with the evil white man, the evil white woman. This was a Senegalese woman. OK, she did this. She she's the director. OK, now let me finish up this this review, this, this breakdown real quick. Okay, so they got Amy front and center during the performance. Amy's front and center. Uh, the moves are so risque that the audience, some of the audience members are like, oh, that's they're cringy, right? You have one shot of a black mother trying to cover her daughter's eyes, and the black girl, she's like, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see. The judges are liking it. Of course, the judges are into it. There's a bunch of sex beta kitten poses. And so like the obvious one is the, the biting of the finger. So when you see women do this, that, that's a sex beta kitten pose. So they did that. There's a couple other poses in there. That's that's sex beta kitten. This basically this was these girls. Um, what you're watching is the result of these girls uh, programming fractured altars, whatever the case, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So then midway through the performance. Amy sees confetti. The confetti is the symbol of the wedding that's taking place right now. She, st she stops dancing and then she begins to sob. And then she runs off stage. She runs home in her outfit, in her costume. The auntie's like, what the hell are you wearing? This ain't a child of God and you're making us look bad. And this, these are the clothes of horror. The mother's like, hey, leave her alone. So the auntie's like, well, whatever. She walks off. The mother gives her a hug. Amy says, don't or don't leave me. Because now Amy, now you see Amy has some some um, abandonment issues. Because there's one scene when the father calls to talk to her. She drops the phone outside of the outside of the, the building. Now they're like three or four stories up. So she, she didn't want to talk to her father. So there's some abandonment issues, some anger issues. You know, she's not getting the attention that she needs. Okay. And plus, she's at that age. So the, the mother tells her she doesn't have to go to the wedding. After the wedding's over, she goes downstairs. They're, they're having a reception. She goes outside. And then there's a bunch of Muslim girls. And they're jumping rope. And they're like, hey, come jump rope with us. And she begins jumping rope with the with the properly dressed little Muslim girls. And then it ends with a rising shot of her bouncing up and down with a smile on her face. The end. 
Listen. <laughs> it took me two days to watch this movie. Two days to watch this movie. Uh, <laughs> Dinah, thank you for the PayPal, mama. It took me two days to watch this movie. This was it's pretty much as bad as it gets. Um, this was pretty much as bad as it gets. And um, th- if this movie deserves um, publicity, it should be totally negative. I-, I know at one point when the poster was first announced and released, they dragged the-, the director chick so bad on Twitter, she left Twitter for a while. And, of course, now here's the crazy part. Now, this is, I'm not like I said, I'm not gonna get into a racial thing, but all of the reviewers who've given this movie uh, glowing reviews have been older white males. Once again, I'm not trying to make this a racial thing, but all of most of the reviewers that have given this movie a positive review are older white males. Now, I've seen some some older white females giving this movie a positive spin as well. I'm looking for black folk to that that stomach. Don't trust me. I'm gonna drag everybody if I can find them. But as of right now, I didn't see any black folk giving this thing a, a, a glowing review. Matter of fact, the lady that does the Roger and the Ebert reviews, she gave it a thumbs up. Remember all my old heads, Roger, Roger and Ebert go to the movies. So, you know, they both died and they, they keep it going with new hosts. So she gave it a, a positive review. Um, but for the most part, most people are reacting very, very negatively to this movie as they should. There's nothing positive about this movie. Nothing at all. Um, yeah, the only black male really shown was the cousin. And um, this, this was, this was beyond, this was, this was, this is what's to come. This is what's to come. Um, yeah, Tessa Thompson. Uh she plays Valkyrie. She gave this thing a positive review. You know okay, so let me let me go into this. So y'all tell me. Wait, wait, wait. Oops. Tasha K. Wow. Now, do y'all understand? Now, do y'all understand how how deep this thing goes? Now, there is no way a black woman should be giving this thing a positive review. There's nothing positive about this movie so now you got black folk the black celebrities coming in to save the day and spin the narrative like no it's not as bad as you guys think here's the good things about the movie okay now my question would be how many of her followers that have seen this movie agree with her once again i i can't you can't you can't go with the evil white man narrative anymore it's it's our own people it's our own people so you got tessa thompson and tasha k Giving this thing a good review. Okay. 